by the privilege of God's grace let me tell you sincerely the life of this man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice testimony of sacrifice as a student God gave me instructions I was sowing all my scholarship I think it's only one I can remember I was on two scholarships it's only one I can remember that I benefited from is either going for a crusade sacrifice when God was building me on the matters of faith I remember times when God would give me an instruction and even as I am now I know that it's not all of them that there was error in my hearing then I had an account with first bank and then you will use teller nothing like one branch connecting to another branch like you have now you can it doesn't matter the branch you carry your teller and your passport remember your passport is like your id card and you stand there and the machine says cash number this cash number that so when they are paying lecturers usually there is a long queue and the holy ghost will make me i will go and stand on that long queue by faith hoping that there will be money in my account hmm. two hours three hours praying in tongues and i would stand there cash and my heart is beating would i have embarrassed myself these four hours i read a powerful book by kenneth Hagin or kenneth this and all of that and then cash and number this sorry are you expecting some money i say yes um maybe you you can call them eh there is no money there after waiting for three hours and i will get back and a joy i cannot explain i didn't know i was in the school of faith so when I speak over your life and it happens now, don't think it just came out of nowhere. There is a track record of trusting God without result until my ego was stung and stung. There was nothing to protect again. In that death, the power of God now came. Are we together? Yes. There was a time in my life I was diagnosed. I was in a seminary. And I was diagnosed of a fungal infection it literally ate my head like hair was almost not supposed to grow again the seminarians and the students complained that you know because of the condition of my head I was irritating them so permanently they kept me at the back it didn't matter whether I came early or not I stayed at the back for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings you're a man of God without compassion because you've not gone through anything that relates to that it is from that pain that the healing anointing flows don't be afraid of your scar today there is power that will flow from that scar your scar means a wound was once there not a wound is there when you get to heaven today you don't know Jesus just by the glory on him alone search for who has the scar on his hand I remember that time eventually they got a soap I remember going to a hospital a lab and they had to culture they took samples they had to use something like a tongue on fire and to take a sample some of you who are lab people microbiologists you know what I'm talking about and then they design a soap and a drug and sir, if I miss that thing for one day, it will show. The pain was enormous. Sometimes there's no water. I'll have to stand and put my head in the rain. And I'm praying in tongues. Lord, I know you are taking me somewhere. It may not be like it. You are not the first to go where you are going. I understand by experience what the Bible says. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff for me it's not a memory verse it's an experience the first time we went for our crusade it was a mighty move of the spirit not many people in all fairness but signs and wonders but we were owing sound money I took some people from Kaduna state that was when I knew that your knowledge in one area of the kingdom will not automatically cover for your ignorance in another area there are keys not a key you can have the key to the kitchen if you are hungry that is good but if you want to use the restroom and you don't have the key to the restroom you are still in the house but you will roam around that house because you do not have the key you need keys to all the rooms 
if you have the key to the living room well done that's wonderful if you want to rest but when you are hungry and you do not have the key to the kitchen you are still in the house but you will still suffer everybody say keys I learned the value of knowledge not just by a lecture by my pain how could a man of God so anointed we fasted fasted and went on that crusade ground blind eyes were opening God was healing people and yet we could not afford 150,000 now it looks it was a lot of money then you know what it means for people to drive from Kaduna by over five or so hours journey to the venue of the crusade ground to set up their entire sound and I was preaching and they were listening to me Jesus saves he heals he delivers and the sound people were watching me I know what it means to be teaching people something you are also expecting God to do in your life but the integrity of ministry demands that you still teach it that sometimes you may not have a child and yet God says teach on fruitfulness and you have to stand and honor your call beyond your pain everybody says sacrifice learn this the gospel of convenience will destroy our generation let God be true and every man including your experience be a liar if I die of sickness today God forbid the last word that will come out of my mouth is by his stripes I am here Lord you seem so far away a million miles on what it feels today we're wrapping up though I haven't lost my faith I must confess right now that is hard for me to pray until you have get, gotten to that point in ministry you don't know what you're doing but I don't know what to say I don't know where to start but as you give the grace with all that's in my heart I will see and I will pray even in my darkest time through the sorrow and the pain I will see I will pray I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true I will see please sit down please sit down we are wrapping up encounters service sacrifice those days when I was in FCS God started lifting and honoring me many of the people who became our leaders in FCS I was there before they came I watched them run around doing registration on campus yet eventually they became leaders some of them I was friend with their pastors and I would go and preach in their church and still come and sit down quietly one of the hardest parts of the journey when you feel you are overqualified for where you are and God says still stay still stay still stay hmm? still stay I remember a point when God was already using me mightily I was then in the choir and they were looking for somebody to be the music director the escorts were even afraid because they knew I was good musically. And they, ah, how can we beg this man of God to be music? This it will be an insult because some of them have sat in meetings where I preach, and their pastors are my friends. They didn't even interview me. They called me and they went, "Please, sir, you know this." I said, "What is it?" They said, "Music director." I said, "With all joy, I will serve him." The person who was um, a music director in the other part, we split the choir into two. Those who lead the regular service and then those who are the main choir of the the other guy because then I had started ministry and he was in the ministry so it's like calling a father and a son to be music director they, they, he refused he said I won't do it I said do it and serve faithfully and if you think I'm doing anything wrong challenge me within the choir no problem when we go outside and we're doing ministry you can give me that honor say sacrifice in Zaria listen let me tell you in Zaria, 
those times because you cannot get a direct flight it was even until recently that the flight to lagos was fairly i will never forget one time sir i was on my way most of the flights i have to leave zaria and go to kaduna 4 a.m 5 a.m i return to zaria sometimes on friday by 5 30 or six o'clock service has started i would just bath and not eat and preach and by the next day 4 a.m i have to be out to catch a nine o'clock flight in Kadu in abuja to go and preach somewhere and i'm starting the morning session for many years i did not stay in my own house for more than more than two weeks in a whole year they came from nowhere is somebody learning we're wrapping up i hope i'm not wasting your time my apologies we're going to pray I, i'm not i'm not i'm not bullying you i'm, I'm I, it's just for you to learn behind every glory there is a story i cannot count how many times god helped us to escape robbers you can imagine me there was a time i was on my way i was going to go and preach in my duguri when boko haram was hot and people were killing true story that time I used to charter a golf that just moves me around for time's sake. And I remember we just crossed Kaduna. We we're on our way going when was it either IRS or, or one of these flights, Chanchanki or one of these former flights. They just sent a text that sorry they are not going again. It was a Friday. If you know anything about the north, respectfully speaking, you don't want to be roaming around the road on Friday by afternoon because anything can happen. And I looked at that my driver i said can you drive to meduguri and he said yes i thought about the souls and the people who needed encouragement in that time of pain they had been praying every man of god was refusing to go there because of their lives for justifiable reason and i said lord what then is the excellency of being an apostle if you cannot go it's, it's not a title it is that you are prepared to serve god even if it means to be matired he said yes I told him reverse the car God is my witness we passed Kano just one hour when there was a bomb blast as soon as we passed Kano I think we we're around Jigawa I just got information please be careful they, they've declared 24 hours curfew I didn't know whether there will be curfew whether we'll be going when we got to Portiscom they had to stop us there and say they were fighting in front you can't move beyond this place I slept that night in the car myself and a gentleman who used to play instrument for me there were people they created a mosque there and were praying i was just there in that car imagine thousands of people some angry chanting all kinds of things and yet you are there and i said lord well it is because i love you it is not because i'm looking for fame if i die here let it be that jesus was glorified through my life that was how we got to meduguri and the people cried they were happy they said so you came I said, if it's for Jesus, I will go to any length. Almost all the crisis in Kaduna that has happened within the last 20 years plus or thereabout, it happened in my presence. 7 11, the crisis four days before 9 11 that happened in Joss, I was in town when the killing started. I watch women, pregnant women, ripped open and their children. Listen, do you know the way oil is made? This anointing that you want. Oil is made from a threshing floor. There are times where in the midst of your pain, I didn't finish my story on that our crusade. I was almost going to jail because of that money. I pleaded and pleaded. I said, please wait, let my scholarship come. I will give it. The people were sincerely patient with me and there was an unnecessary delay. That was when the Lord began to reveal to me that there was a need to understand the principles of finances. Otherwise, you can be anointed. Even as a prophet, if you don't have bread, you will die. So for me, contending for financial principles is not a matter of convenience. I've tasted of the other side of being deficient of financial intelligence the last stage is empowerment and i'll stop there 
one night in the midst of my various encounters in the midst of my service to the house of God with all my heart as best as I could in the midst of all the sacrifices something happened I was seated quietly in my room when a strange visitation happened I'm seated quietly and suddenly it almost looked like rapture and a stranger walks into my room standing before me was the king of kings and the lord of lords himself I have seen him when Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, stood before me, I could look at any part of him forever and not be tired. The brightness and the brilliance. When I looked at Jesus, I knew that many preachers did not know him. It wasn't to condemn, but sincerely so, let me tell you. He was not talking to me, yet I was understanding everything he was saying. That's when I learned that you do not have to speak to talk. The language of God is light. And then he stretched his mighty right hand towards me. And light, like the sun in its brilliance, just entered into my entire being. Whether I was alive or dead, I cannot explain to you. And with a warm smile, how he left he didn't come through the door he just left and the moment that happened I opened my Bible and there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation what is this mystery what was happening to me one last vision and then we pray empowerment I was taken in a vision and I stood at an elevated it looked like the window of a room upstairs and I saw an endless sea of people it was a generation and they were crying and then it was like I focused on those who were in front why are you crying and they said there's no food and there's no water I said who is the cause and they pointed at me the whole generation was crying and they said we don't have food and water and the reason is because of you. And I said, no, 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 I can't be that wicked. My name means a way to love. And then I told them, I said, I am coming to rescue you. But I remember that some people had chased me to be there. It was out of fear. I found myself locked up in that small room. But I made up my mind. I said, if I perish, I perish. As soon as I opened that door, there was a giant white or gray bearded man. He stretched his hands. And held my little hands he said I will walk with you come now I know that was the Holy Spirit he held my hands this is where the ministry of the Spirit was birthed from the signs and the wonders and the manifestations that you see be sensitive now because I'm seeing a cloud every time I begin to talk about these meetings I see these things begin to happen just help those under the anointing because many of you are in seasons where that stranger that spirit of the living God that is, is coming and when he held my hands he said let's go and it was a building to another building where to be jumping I was too small to jump the size of those buildings but there were small ladders connecting them and he would jump and sit down and wait for me to climb the ladder slowly in another encounter I was opened up in a vision and the Lord said son from today I give you my presence as a gift listen carefully and when I saw that my eyes were open and I saw this being standing he said this angel will walk with you I said what is his name he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence this is what is responsible for some of these manifestations that you see there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a 
before we wrap up because many of you through prayer and fasting and the rest you are pressing into dimensions and the higher your knowledge the higher your pride the higher your knowledge the higher your dishonor to men of God your pastor fathers of faith right now you see all kinds of things young people all are everybody talking about everybody correcting everybody it is true that there are issues in the body of Christ that need to be straightened out. But never forget that the body you are insulting is somebody's wife. And jealousy is the rage of a man. When you insult a person's wife, you will arise in anger and jealousy. Even when the wife of a man is suffering from cancer, even when they amputate part of her body, she's still his wife. And let me tell you, this husband is a faithful one. He will not fail. The church will not fail. Not because we have the power to live well or live strong. The basis of our confidence is the husband we married. Our confidence is his responsibility. He will insist that his church becomes a glorious bride. Don't carry God's load and put on your head. He is responsible enough to bring beauty and glory out of his bride. There are two prayer points we are going to pray. Because there are people here, please do not miss tonight's meeting. For sake of time, we may not be able to really minister, but in two minutes, one of the things, the graces that I believe will fall in this place is the grace for encounters. Many of you, your convictions are not strong. You cannot dare the devil. Listen, let me tell you, by the grace of God, I have held charms, I have seen demons, I have met with all kinds of things. Physical and spiritual. There have been times when genuine prophets of God who love God sent a text and said, Apostle, are you on a trip? I said, yes. He said, please don't go. Because we just saw a vision and we saw a ghastly motor accident. And they were right. That was a plot of Satan. But dominion is the ability to superimpose the speakings of Satan until the purposes of God are established in your life. Don't stand before Pharaoh if you've not seen the burning bush. There are many braggers in the body of Christ respectfully oh i can god can god forbid and we make all kinds of empty boasts your strength is based on your union with him most people have stood before demon possessed people and struggled around manipulating their heads because they think it's just by touching people with no track record of power with god for some of you after this conference go on a break for one month tell the people no ministration anywhere please and flog it out with God God walk on me let me not come out and be lying let me not say things that I know by myself 
is not true. When God empowers you, you will lay up gold as dust. When God empowers you, he will, he will give you a name that no power in existence can bring down. Is someone ready to pray? In the next two minutes, let's work with time. We are going to pray in the spirit non-stop. I'd like you to stretch and cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I open up my spirit in this conference. Someone is praying. Man of God, pray. Prophet, pray. Evangelist, pray. Parantes, kata brande kete balakata. Kata bakata brande kete balakata. Kos koko brande kete. That we do not teach cunning with device table. Custodians of power. Custodians of wisdom. Custodians of grace. Witnesses, validators of the claims of God. One moment. Hallelujah. 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 But in a great house, it starts by saying, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then he says, But in a great house, that there are four kinds of vessels gold, silver, clay, wood. He says, Some vessels are unto honor, and some vessels are unto dishonor. Dr. Lumi, they already listed 10 things here in his session that can make a man a vessel of dishonor. All of this nonsense, competition, jealousy, backbiting, carnality, wasting of time, crying for money, manipulating for money, compromising on God's standards for the belly, teaching lies, prophesying lies, you are going to pray because some of you are already being mentored by these systems. Cry a cry of prayer. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil. Someone pray. Don't condemn. Don't castigate. But pray. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from pride. Deliver me from lust. Deliver me from a wicked heart. Deliver me from the spirit of competition. Lord, deliver me from a haughty spirit. Lord, may I not become a disaster to your program. Pray. Grant me the grace to respect every other grace. Grant me the grace to respect and honor every other man of God. Grant me the grace to forbear with the weaknesses of, of men of God, the weaknesses in the body. Grant me the grace to be tolerant. Grant me the grace to be an intercessor. Grant me the grace to have passion for the world. The appetite to outshine. The appetite for competition. The appetite for dishonor. The craving for fame. Take it out of my life, O God. Take it out of my life, oh God. Are you praying? Take it out of my life. Root it out. For some of you, it has destroyed you so far. 
pride has limited God from lifting you and giving you the keys to territories and nations. Cast away the spirit of laziness. It takes sacrifice to lead the faith. It takes sacrifice to be a champion in the kingdom. The spirit of laziness, the spirit of slumber, giving flimsy excuses for not fasting, for not praying, for not knowing the Lord. This honor to your pastor, this honor to the grace upon your man of God, this honor to the system God has placed in the body. Repent before the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I want you to get the teaching series, especially for today's meeting, all of the sessions, get it and flog it out with destiny. Some of you, after this conference, what you need next is a retreat. I want to pray for you. One minute, please listen. Tonight, I want you to invite everyone, even if there is no space here, if it means you sitting on the roof this night, make up your mind that that which God has in store for you, that you will not miss it. I stretch my hands right now and I pray.